Hi everyone, welcome to another video of security engineer interview questions. Now this video is going to be a very different from the ones we've done so far. This video is going to focus on a more existential or a more long-term question that a lot of us have uh, in our InfoSec careers. If you're pursuing a career in InfoSec or if you are you're looking to start a career in InfoSec, this is a question that a lot of you are going to ask at some point in time. Is it important that I know how to code with my career in InfoSec? That's the question. Now let's get started and let's unpack this question in a great deal of detail. Let's get started. We're gonna be constantly putting out content on AppSec, cloud security, container security, DevSecOps, and Kubernetes security. Now, if you like this sort of content, you should consider liking and subscribing to this channel on YouTube. In addition, it would be great if you could follow us on Twitter and on LinkedIn. A common question that a lot of us have, especially when we get into information security is, hey, should I learn how to code? Because a lot of times we come to information security from different backgrounds. Some of us are not even from the IT background. Some of us may be from IT, uh, maybe from the service desk or help desk, or maybe from a typical network or network security background. Some of us just start off in information security and we don't have prior uh, experience in any other space. So a lot of us have varying degrees of uh, experience when we get into or we're looking to get into information security. And one of the big questions, especially with the rise of the cloud and DevOps and all of that stuff is, hey, do I need to know how to code? Because will I get left out if I don't know how to code is a question that a lot of us have. Now, before I actually unpack this and get into a lot of detail about how this you know thing transpires, let me talk a little bit about myself. I started off as somebody from finance. In fact, I, I finished my CPA exam. And as soon as I finished my CPA exam in the US, I decided I wanted nothing to do with finance. So I got into the world of information security. So my coding skills at the time I got into information security was patchy at best. And I had maybe some experience with Java, but that was not great. It was not perfect. I wouldn't rate myself as a great uh, coder. Uh, when I got into information security. But that didn't stop me from doing what I did. In fact, I learned uh, coding over time. In fact, I learned how to write a lot of different programs. In fact, I wrote full stack applications. And that, of course, has largely been my area of interest. But when you're looking at whether you want to learn how to code, let's talk a little bit about that because there are several nuances to this question. And I want to get into different aspects of this question and see how that might apply to your area of interest within information security. Now, if you look at a career in InfoSec, I've kind of made these broad classifications that I'm going to be talking about, and especially looking at whether coding is important in these areas of focus that you're getting into. So let's unpack this a little bit and look at what these areas are. So first of all, you have the GRC compliance audit area, right? So let's say you are a PCI auditor or an ISO auditor, or you're getting into mostly GRC work or compliance related work. Now that's completely different. That's still part of InfoSec, right? That's still part of InfoSec, but that's not necessarily, uh, you know, offensive security or security engineering or something like that. It's still very much a part of InfoSec. It's, it's a very important concept in the cybersecurity space, but it's very different from the other areas of more tactical security, right? So that's GRC compliance and audit. Then of course you have security engineering. Now I, when I say security engineering, I also include SecOps and ops part of security as part of this. So security engineering, SecOps may be an area of focus that you might be looking at. That is something that you may be interested in that you're already doing, or you might be looking to gain more traction in your career with security engineering or security operations today, right? Of course, you have the, you know, the ever glamorous offensive security. A lot of us today start off in offensive security. We even continue our entire careers in offensive security. We're looking at red teaming. We're looking at pen testing. We're looking at those sort of folks. Even a lot of your uh, malware reverse engineering folks, I would put in this bucket, although they could also fall into that next bucket of security research. Uh, so offensive security typically consists of people who are looking to break things on a continuous basis or who are looking to reverse engineer things on a continuous basis as their career progresses, right? So these are the broad classifications of security that I've put in. I'm, I'm sure I'm missing out a few things, but again, I'm 
hoping to cover these as these broad classifications. I've also not put security management in here, right? Because as a CISO or a security manager, your role is more, I would say, more people management along with some of these other things. But again, it becomes more people management and a more team management and more vendor management in many cases. So I would put that aside. I'm not going to be focusing on that. I'm going to be focusing on the people who are still trying to make this choice, right? A lot of us are still trying to make this choice and that's who I'm focusing on in this part of the video. Now, as you can see from the classifications, you will realize that there is not one single type of infosec career, right? Depending upon how you want to do things or what your interest is or what you're already doing and what you want to get better at, all of these things are quite open to you. So it's not that you have this one career in infosec that has to be uber technical or uber GRC oriented or something like that. It's really a variety of things that you can do with infosec as a subject matter so it's not that you have this one path to go to so that's something that you should take solace in you have a lot of different places to go when you are looking at infosec i would say you know take the three things right what you can be great at what you what you what people pay money for obviously if you're employed or if you're a consultant what people pay money for and of course what people want, right? What is the need of the market? What is the demand of the market? So things like DevOps and cloud and things like that are hot, but and they will remain hot for a while. But that doesn't mean you have to only chase them. You need to focus on things that you want to do as well when you are looking at a career in InfoSec. One of the things that I want to talk about is the, the perception of the term coding, right? A lot of times people confuse coding to be writing or being a developer writing full stack applications or creating massive uh, web services or other types of applications that's not nearly the case in most cases especially for security you just need to understand what the code does or you need to be able to write some tools or customize something that will be that will be useful for you in your in your uh, own efforts or for your company as part of its own devops pipeline or for something related to the cloud or something like that right so it's not usually that, or even with things like reverse engineering, you're not necessarily writing massive apps. You are mostly looking at code from a readability standpoint, in some cases, reverse engineering or integration or something like that. That's one thing I want to clarify before getting into the meat of this particular video. Let's start off with the first category of InfoSec career that we, that I've looked at previously, right? So this is the GRC audit and compliance career in information security. Now, do you need to code for this particular career type that you have? Now, this is probably the one of the easiest answers that we have, which is the typical answer to this is no. You don't need to necessarily know how to code when you're getting into GRC or, uh, you know, compliance related work or your typical audit related to GRC or compliance or internal audit uh, for your information security and things like that. You don't necessarily need to know how to code. This is probably the least amount of coding uh, necessary that you will have from a information security career perspective. So usually this career involves looking at different controls, examining different controls, coordinating with multiple operations folks as to, uh, hey, you know what is, you know, give me uh, evidence that you have these firewall rules in place or you have these cloud security controls in place. This is largely about using certain policies, procedures and things like that and being able to map them against real world controls that you have that have been implemented within your organization. In fact, a large amount of skills in this space will go towards uh, essentially people, right? In fact, asking people the right questions, getting them to open up and making sure that they're not threatened, especially a lot of folks in this space are auditors in the technical sense. And if you don't cultivate capability to get the right things out of people, you will see that you're not going to be very successful in this. More than coding, you need to understand how you should deal with people and how you can have people respond to you in a positive way rather than in an adversarial way. The other skill that obviously comes with the GRC side is policy procedures, You're looking at risk assessments and things like that. So again, it's a lot of activity involving coordination. It's a lot of activity involving process and procedure. And of course, comes with that paperwork and big picture stuff, right? Fitting things into the organization perspective. Now, this typically, like I've said, does not require you to code all that much. However, 
I have heard a lot of my friends and I have a lot of friends who are in this space. In fact, I started off in this space. I started off as a PCI auditor. And a lot of my friends who are internal auditors or compliance auditors or GRC folks and things like that, one of the things that they're commonly coming up with is that, hey, you know what? My company's on the cloud or they've suddenly taken to Kubernetes and things like that. And I have no idea how to actually assess these. I am not able to figure out how I can as an auditor or as a compliance person, even figure out, go look to where to start when I'm looking at these systems. So in that case, one of the benefits may be to learn these technologies, right? So to learn these technologies and for that, you will need to maybe read some level of code. You may not need to become a developer in the true sense of the term, but you definitely need to understand a little bit if you want to kind of evolve to the next level of the space. In fact, I also feel like policy as code and things like that are also disrupting this space quite a bit as we speak. So it might make sense as a more future proofing of your GRC or audit, uh, auditing career to understand some of these new technologies and understand how the you know, behind the scenes of this works. How does infrastructure as code work? You may not need to go deep into it, but at least you should be able to understand how to interpret them. Maybe look at a couple of tools that can help you identify anomalies with them and things like that. That will definitely help you much further than maybe learning how to specifically code and become a great developer sort of person. Now let's look at probably the most controversial uh, job type in information security and whether you need to code for it, which is offensive security. Now, a lot of folks uh, see offensive security as essentially cultivating an offensive mindset. And of course, you don't need to code for this, uh, for being good at offensive security. And some people go the other way. They say, hey, you know what? Offensive security is all about being able to figure out how things work on the inside. So you need to know how to code. You need to understand how to code. You need to understand how to read code, write code, things like that. Now, my take on this is essentially as, as follows, right? So if you're looking at offensive security, I think that knowing to code is a huge advantage, right? Knowing to code is a huge advantage. Again, knowing to code does not mean you need to be a full stack developer of everything, but knowing to code definitely helps you understand what kind of internal you know, internal systems that you're dealing with or what kind of patterns that your application has or what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of application it is that you're testing or what kind of environment that you're testing against. All of those things make a big difference. Knowing how to code gives you a force multiplier effect for offensive security because today offensive security is not only about, you know, running tools. A lot of people think offensive security is just, hey, I'm going to run this tool and that's offensive security, but no. Offensive security is a combination of using automated and manual techniques to be able to try and figure out how things work and then abuse certain functionality based on how they work, right? So whether it is an application or a network device or a firmware or whatever else you're testing, understanding how it works and abusing how it works is essentially part of offensive security. And knowing how to code is a huge leg up and your career is much better served if you know how to code. And I would say, I would go on the line and say that, you know what, in this age uh, and day where you are looking at cloud, you're looking at a lot of these systems like Kubernetes or cloud, uh, you're looking at, of course, more complicated IoT products or, uh, you know, uh, multiple areas which are very, very intensive in their own way. If you don't know how to code, I'm sure you will get left out in offensive security. While other things may be important, patience and curiosity and all of those things are very important, knowing how to code, I think, will elevate you to the next level in this space, right? So that's definitely something that you should be looking at if you're an offensive security person. Now let's look at security engineering or security operations, right? Now here, again, I would say it depends. Now, it really depends on a lot of different factors. But I would say that the biggest orientation, even in this space, is knowing how to code would be essential, right? Because security engineering requires you to engineer new solutions or maybe uh, engineer integrations between existing solutions for you to actually make your job easier or to add value to your engineering team 
or to add value to your security team or to add value to your organization at large, right? So if you're in security engineering or security operations, I would say knowing how to code is going to be important. Yes, now this varies in terms of degrees, right? So for instance, let's say you are in uh, SOC and you are probably uh, w working with SIMs and things like that. Maybe coding is not as critical there because you're largely looking at events. Even there, I would argue that being able to code can help you sift through a lot of data, can help you slice and dice data differently. That will also help a lot. But when you're getting into the more core aspects of security engineering, especially for modern product teams that are on the cloud, or they're doing a lot of DevOps work, their security engineering would definitely entail a lot of coding, right? That's where coding becomes a pretty big aspect of your life. In fact, I've seen security engineers spend more time building out solutions rather than, you know, doing typical penetration testing, vulnerability scanning, that sort of stuff, right? Security engineering in many companies, in, in fact, in, in companies like Slack or Netflix and things like that, security engineers actually build out full-fledged solutions for their security teams or for, you know, their engineering teams that helps them achieve certain security goals. So this is a more spectrum thing, unlike security research, which I see as a more binary thing. But I still see that knowing how to code is a big deal with security engineering and security ops. So I would definitely recommend knowing how to code. Now let's look at the security researcher. Now this is probably where I would say not knowing how to code is going to be a or it's going to be a huge barrier of entry when you're trying to do research in security. Right. Research by nature means you're trying to figure out something new. You're trying to leverage something new or new technique or new approach, something like that. And new requires you to obviously figure out a lot of new things. You write some tools, write some POCs, etc. And not knowing how to code will definitely not even allow you to probably get into this space with a lot of uh, with a lot of competence, right? You may still call yourself a researcher. And I see this a lot on LinkedIn, a lot of people calling themselves researchers when they're finding cross-site scripting bugs on websites. I don't consider that research. Research is essentially leveraging something new or looking at a new technique or chaining some uh, an attack technique in multiple ways and trying to figure it out. That I would say is research or even more defensive research in the area of authorization or cryptography or something like that that is research. And for that, I would say without knowing how to code, you're not going to be anywhere. You'll definitely not be able to do your job competently enough as a researcher without knowing how to code. So this is a, I would say a given that researchers need to know how to code, need to know how to code really well, perhaps. In fact, a lot of researchers in security come from a dev background or have been developers for a very long time before they actually become researchers. So I would say that that is definitely something that I would look at if I'm trying to become a security researcher in some way, shape, or form. If you like that video, you should consider liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you want the best quality education for AppSec, Cloud Native Security, Kubernetes, DevSecOps, Threat Modeling, and a constantly updated library of amazing courses with amazing hands-on labs, you should get a subscription for appsecengineer.com. Subscriptions are available for both individuals and teams of any size that you can access on appsecengineer.com. Please check us out.